I am Ole Lansmar, CTO at TestTube, as we heard. Thank you so much. Um, been in this space for a long time. Uh, if you're familiar with OpenAPI, I was the chairman of the OAI uh, OpenAPI initiative, um, worked at SmartPair and other companies in the API space. TestTube is an open source project, which is a, uh, TestTube is also a member of the CDF, but the project itself has not been donated yet, something that we should talk about Lori, perhaps. Um, I'm gonna, this is probably the most technical talk you're gonna hear today, so for the developers here, uh, this is gonna be very hard on, hard on, and it's also gonna be very, um, the slide design is very Nordic. Uh, I'm from Stockholm, so it's very minimalistic, Ikea, not a lot of memes and colors. Uh, there's some purple here. Okay, uh, so let's just start with CD events. Uh, also, I wanna just say, we've heard three talks now, I think, saying how important testing is. So I think that's great to hear. Uh, uh, I think everyone kind of agrees with that, but we've also seen a lot of changes in testing and testing practices, and that's what we're trying to address here. Just as a quick recap, uh, CD events is was born out of the need that realization that different CI and CD tools and platforms need to communicate as we're building out more and more complex pipelines. We want those to be kind of uh, not, uh, we want them to be loosely coupled and that would preferably be through an advanced eventing architecture. And the CD events protocol was one of the projects then that was created. Uh, Andrea, who's sitting here, is the lead for that. So if you have any technical questions about CD events specifically, he can answer all of those. Uh, it's built on top of cloud events. Uh, so it's, which in itself is another project and, a, and a, a pretty established standard. So this is something that's kind of well uh, rooted in the space. And it has, a, it's incubated in, in the CDF website. Where you, there's a website you can go to. The CDF defines uh, events for a bunch of things. Uh, this is just from the website itself. So there's events related to source control. There's events related to continuous integration. There's events related to testing, which is what I'm gonna talk about, continuous deployment and continuous operations and cloud events finding, et cetera. So it's, it, it covers a, a rather broad uh, area of, within uh, CI, CD. But I'm gonna be focusing on specifically on testing. Uh, and this is something, um, obviously, TestCube, the project I'm from, is about testing, which you can probably guess by the name. Something that we've, uh, very you know enthusiastic about and we when we discovered the cd event spec we kind of quickly realized there's maybe a need to to extract what was at that at that point a very small support for testing uh within uh, i think it was the continuous integration events there was uh, there was a couple of subjects and predicates so why do we why did we think that there's a need for new events specifically for testing well i think as we've already heard a couple of times today today in a distributed architecture Tests are now run not just as part of your build jobs in Jenkins or, Git, uh, or GitHub, but often uh, run asynchronously. They can be run manually. They can be run as a response to events happening in your clusters or from your incident management. There's people doing testing production. We have people who don't even run tests as part of their CI CD pipelines because they take too long and instead they schedule their tests to run every 30 minutes and use that as a way to quality gate their systems. So people are not running tests maybe as strictly as they were 10, 15 years ago. Uh, and so to that, uh, to kind of cater to that and to those, all those use cases and those, the decoupling of testing from your s traditional static build jobs, uh, it felt to us that the need for events related to testing was kind of pretty obvious. So what we did then was we defined a couple of events. Uh, and as I said already, these replaced the previously defined test suite and test case subjects that were in the continuous integration category, all the documentation and the JSON schemas and the examples, they're all on the repo uh, on GitHub, so it's all there. And this was released as uh, version 0 0.1.0, as part of 0 0.3.0 CD events. I guess this was in June or something? I don't remember, earlier this year at least. Okay, let's just dive, this is gonna be very techy. And lots of monospaced fonts, which means code. Uh, so what we've basically done is we've defined three uh, subjects, uh, a test case run, which models the execution of a test, a uh, test suite run, which models the execution of a test suite, and a test output, which models an output from a test case run specifically. So important to note here that we're not modeling the test case itself or the test suite itself. 
it's, it's about the actual execution. And we heard similar earlier today about pipeline runs and task runs, et cetera. So these are defined as separate uh, subjects. And then for each of these, we've defined predicates, queued, started, finished uh, for the first two, and then a published. And I'm gonna walk you just through what that looks like, and, and I'm gonna show an example at the end, of course. So test case run, uh, and if you look at the seed event spec, there's, it defines a couple of common uh, fields that all objects have, or all subjects, so, uh, and some of those are inherited uh, from there, but specifically the last three here, for each test case run, there's an environment, so you know which environment it's running in. Uh, you can provide a test case that is kind of an abstract reference to a test case somewhere, and this is very abstract. The test case could be a JUnit test, it could be a Postman collection, it could be a Cypress test, it could be you know, whatever testing tool you're using. And a test case run can also be related to a test suite run. And this is when it comes to more complex orchestration of tests, which we're seeing more in integration test scenarios where you might, as part of an integration test, run both API tests, uh, UI tests, security tests, load tests, either at the same time or in parallel, just to kind of see how everything works out. And then you orchestrate all of those into a test suite run. And maybe a little bit complex, but that's how usually things usually end up if you're doing this kind of thing anyway. So just looking at the queued uh, predicate for test case run. So this is an event that would be emitted when a test case is being scheduled to run. It hasn't actually run. Uh, so, and it might be waiting for some applicable constraints to come into place, right? It could be resource availability. It might be waiting for something else to finish. It might be, you know, waiting for something else to pass or maybe not fulfilled, maybe, uh, before, but something to be fulfilled before executing. So, uh, for example, Jen for example, Jenkins could potentially emit a test case run queued event when it's starting a build job where it knows that it has a test case or a test step later on in its build, right? But it hasn't actually run the test. So uh, on this receiving side, at least you'd be knowing, okay, this might be coming up. This is not a required event. So these are many of these events, and we'll get back to the heuristics about which events would you actually, actually expect. Uh, and you'll see that a trigger object is also commonly used here, because you might want to know how is this actually being triggered? Is it a manual trigger? Somebody might clicking run this test button and you might in the end want to ignore manually triggered tests. You, maybe you're only interested in tests that are triggered by uh, a pipeline in Jenkins or some other mechanism. So trying to give some opportunities on how to, alternatives on how to man handle these events. Test case run started, not surprisingly, is emitted when the actual test case starts. Once again, you'll know, have to know which environment it's running in, which test case it's related to, which test suite run it might be related to, and what triggered it. And the queued event that I mentioned earlier is not mandatory, so many times you'll just get this event emitted from your system, and you probably won't get a queued event. Uh, and the only thing that's actually mandatory here is the ID and the environment. So all of these others are optional, just to kind of give the receiver more context Test case could definitely be interesting because you might want to aggregate all test case runs for a specific test case over time. You want to might want to track how is this test case performed over time when it comes to status, pass fail, et cetera, et cetera. And not surprisingly, there's a finished event at the end, which then adds uh, once again the ID, so you can kind of uh, go back to which test case run you're talking about, which environment, and then the outcome of that test if it pass, fail, cancel error. And we have a pull request Al, now for adding a skip uh, um, opportunity, alternative here. Uh, as, as always, small things can result in big debates, so it hasn't been approved yet. So you can go to the GitHub issue and, and weigh in. Um, we've also added severity, and this is obviously, or not obviously, but this is a little bit of a stretch because severity is, is subjective. Uh, you know, if a test fails, in one context, it might be real, really bad, but if it fails, so if, if your load test doesn't pass in production, that's really bad, but if it doesn't pass in testing, that's maybe not so bad because you know that's a constrained resource. Uh, so severity is something that is not mandatory, and reason is just a string that you know, tells you, gives you more context on the receiving side. Once again, the only thing that's required here is the outcome, uh, a pass-fail stadio, because that's at least the least thing we thought would be helpful. Now we're coming to test suites and test suite runs. Once again, not surprisingly, test suite run models uh, the execution of a test suite, and it also has 
reference to the environment that it's running in. So once again, staging, production, whatever, uh, and a reference to a test suite object that could be defined in an external system. And here we have the similar uh, queued, I'm not gonna read these tables to you or at you. Uh, it's the same kind of queued, started, finished uh, events that we saw for uh, test cases and they have similar uh, properties uh, as you would maybe expect. The last one is the test output subject that I mentioned earlier and this is interesting because often a test emits an output not just a pass fail ratio right so if you're running a Cypress test you can get a video of the recording or if you're running Postman you can get a hard to read log output or whatever testing tool you might be using uh, and it would be nice uh, obviously to get a reference to that and there's a test output published event and note that a test case run can publish multiple outputs, right? So you could get both a log, a video, and a PDF containing some kind of report. It's totally up to this testing system to decide what it can kind of produce. The things that are required here is the output type, obviously somewhat subjective of what we decided on initially as uh, the valid uh, values here. Uh, and the format which would be, would be a mime type, so application PDF, et cetera. Nice to hear if you, uh, the sources you can see is required. So here we thought it was mandatory to help the receiver of this event actually receive, <laughs> or actually retrieve the artifact. Because if you know there's been a PDF produced or a, a video, you might wanna know where to actually get it uh, and instead of, okay, there's, because that's probably why, why you're interested in it in the first place. So that's why uh, the source is, is mandatory, the URI is not mandatory, which maybe it should have been, uh, which is a more straightforward reference to the actual uh, output that was published. And a test case run, allowing you to associate the output uh, with the actual execution of a test case. Please note that this is not mandatory, so the only thing you might be receiving on the end is test outputs, uh, not very helpful, but it, once again, depends on the implementation of testing events uh, that you're using. Also define a couple of objects that we've, I've mentioned, test case, test suite trigger. I don't know if we need to go through these in detail. Uh, test cases is a test case, and a test suite is a test suite, and a trigger is a trigger. Uh, for the triggers, maybe a little bit interesting to know if, as I mentioned, triggers can be for queuing and starting test cases and test suites, so these can be manual, pipeline, and event a schedule, so if you have a schedule trigger like every hour or every whatever, and other, which are always references. And then there are URI reference, and this is, I think, for all these objects, there are URI references optional, so if the system that holds the test case or the test suite or the trigger can provide a URI where you can actually look at it in a web interface or an API call to retrieve the definition of that uh, object, that's what you would use. Okay, slightly more colorful and confusing slide. Um, so just trying to model all of these. So we had the test suite run subject uh, with the predicates queued, started, finished. Uh, the bolded uh, tags or uh, prop fields are required. So as you can see, on, the only thing that's really required here is where it's running and the ID of the test suite run and then the outcome when it's finished. Same thing for a test case run. The only thing that's really required is the ID and the environment and the outcome. And for the test output, um, what's required is the format. And then the sequence or the heuristics of kind of, if, if you're on the receiving side and you're gonna build something that reacts to these events, how, how you're gonna want to know which events am I gonna get, right? Uh, and this hasn't really been defined in, in the specification and that's maybe a shortcoming. Uh, and maybe something we should at least attempt to write down because you you'd probably want to know that if I have a test suite, uh, is there always going to be a started event? Will like if there's a queued event, will there be a started event after that? Or what if it doesn't start? What if it just gets queued? Is it and it cancels? Will there be a finished event with a specific outcome, etc.? And I don't think we've really it's maybe something for us to we've talked about it a lot, but we haven't really formalized it S specifically also around. If a test case, if there's a test suite run, that test suite run can contain multiple test cases. And as I mentioned earlier, 
those test cases can run in any order. They can run in parallel, they can run in sequence. So the, the order of those events will, is totally undefined. Well, hopefully it'll get the finished before the started uh, for a specific test and the queued before the started, although that's not guaranteed. So just a, a little bit of an attempt as heuristics here. A test suite is an orchestration of multiple test cases. A single test suite run event can contain to, I'm not, not going to read this at you, uh, but I think you can all get it. Um, what's maybe important then is that the queued events are optional, the test outputs are op optional. So I think the only thing today that you could expect is uh, started and finished events for test suites and test cases. Um, but of course it's up to the person or the project implementing these events to uh, implement them in, in, you know, uh, as much as they want. So how would you use these events in your CI CD pipelines? Uh, so uh, a couple of use cases, right? So one is notifications, right? You want to be notified in Slack if a test fails. Uh, it's kind of an obvious thing. If you want, maybe you want to even, we've had users who want to automatically create Jira issues, for example if a specific thing fails or if you have an incident management tool, you might want to get notifications into that. The other is aggregated or centralized test result management. What if you could pull all these events coming from all your different testing tools, dump them into one system that calculates your, creates reports and creates you know, quality metrics and pass rates, pass rate, uh, fail ratios, etc. And you might have, have I might have application lifecycle management tools like uh, Captain or Spinactor or others who might be interested in listening to these events and then uh, deducing from them if they can promote releases from one, uh, from one um, place to another. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways you can use these. And just for some a little bit more color, just to kind of visualize that. So today you'd have CI CD systems, testing tools, test orchestration frameworks, uh, which would all kind of publish these testing events to a CD events broker, and then you could have a notifications, reporting, application lifecycle management, all, all listening to those events and then acting accordingly. So obviously your test orchestration framework could be listening to other events and using that to run testing tools. You could have testers or DevOps people, you know, run your tests ad hoc, as I mentioned earlier, which is actually not that uncommon, um, and then, kind of weaving this all together uh, to hopefully kind of build out more dynamic pipelines as you deploy your applications. And I'm gonna do a little bit of an example because you're maybe curious about what do these events actually look like. Let's see if this works. So um, TestCube is an open source project which is, if we look at, is one of these test orchestration frameworks. Uh, I just have a simple curl test. It has uh, support for CD events that you can configure a webhook. I'm using webhook.site here where I'm gonna receive these events. So I'm just gonna run, start by running a simple test, which is a curl test. This is running locally on my machine, hopefully. Uh, and as you can see how we first got a, a test case run started event with some you know, URI, which would actually take me to the dashboard in TestCube to look at that test. And then we got a corresponding finished event. We didn't, unfortunately, get a test output event, which is in the backlog. I'm going to nag the developers to do that. But I could, of course, I could go in here and then here see the log that was produced by curl. And this is ultimately what you would maybe want to have a uh, test output event for. So you could retrieve that log for curl. And then correspondingly, TestCube has the concept of test suites. So this test suite here only contains that same curl test, but if I go back here and run that now, it's running locally, you're gonna see all these events coming in. So there's a test suite run event, and then there's a test case run, and then there's a test case run finished, and then a test suite run finished at the end. So all those four events that you would expect to come in sequence come here. So TestCube allows you to orchestrate tests both in parallel and in sequence. So if I had a much more elaborate test than this one, you would have gotten a much more elaborate sequence of events um, that you could then react to on the other end, uh, however you might want to, if you had plugged this into some kind of CD, um, CD events uh, bus or broker. And that was really short. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm gonna stop there. Uh, as always, 
these standards really depend on people in getting involved. Uh, you know, it's easy for me from a test group project and Andrea and others to kind of, you know, think of what we, people will need uh, based on what we've seen, but ultimately it's based on what you guys do and how you do testing and how you want to make testing part of your pipelines that drives this. So please get over to GitHub and open an issue or just talk to me or Andrea or anyone else. Um, and I'm of course happy to discuss. I'll be here for a couple of days and I'll be at KubeCon too. And you can get these really nice plushies. They're like this big. That's like the most popular thing. That's it. Any questions? Nope. Okay, thank you so much.